The thoughts and opinions expressed in this video are entirely my own and are not representative of Sega, any of its studios or brands. I do not work directly on Sonic the Hedgehog, nor am I privy to any advanced information. I am just one of the biggest fans in the world, living out my dream of working at my favourite publisher. With that being said, let's get on with the video. It's mind blowing to me that we've had Sonic Frontiers at our fingertips for a year now. It seems like only yesterday that I was sat here listening to I'm Here on repeat, itching to jump into the Star Wars Islands. But as we reach the one year anniversary, it's fair to say Sonic Frontiers is not the same game we played 12 months ago. Director Kishimoto has added a metric shit ton of content to the game, which paints it in a whole new light. So I figured it's time to revisit the game and reevaluate it in its entirety. Hold on to your rings because it's time to talk Sonic Frontiers one year later. When approaching this video, I don't think it's worth going over what was before. You know my views, I think it's a 9 out of 10 game through and through. It's the best 3D Sonic game since SA2 in my humble opinion. Since then we've had three big updates for the game. The first two added some quality of life updates such as the jukebox, battle rush and cyberspace challenge, a foray of new cosmetics and even the spin dash. But I really want to focus on the third update as that changes everything when it comes to talking about this game. Update 3 gave us so much more than I was expecting. New playable characters and even bigger a new story. Now firstly I want to say that Kishimoto did not need to do this. He did this for us and I think it speaks volumes about how much he cares about the Sonic the Hedgehog brand and the fan base. He took the ending of this game and decided to make it better and in doing so added whole new levels of shonen anime epicness that we've never seen before in the Sonic series. Don't get me wrong we've seen epic anime goodness from this franchise before but if the original Sonic Frontiers is like Naruto, then the game now is like Naruto Shippuden. Yes, I avoided the inevitable Dragon Ball comparison. That's an entirely different video on its own. Let's talk about playable characters, because outside of fighting games and the occasional hack and slash, new playable characters aren't often something found in DLC, let alone free DLC. Kishimoto san didn't need to do that, but he did it for us and it adds a whole new element to Sonic Frontiers. Not to mention by giving us an entirely rewritten finale of the game for these characters to make their mark. Each of our new playable characters, Amy, Knuckles and Tails, come with the brand new abilities we've never seen before, as well as some familiar ones. Much like Sonic when we first played this game. Let's start with Amy Rose, who is potentially my favourite of the three. She comes with a set of tarot cards and I really like this addition. It seems like Sonic Team really care about the continuity and are bringing her classic elements into her modern gameplay. She's a bit of a powerhouse here and seeks to find the Coco to help her find the Chaos Emeralds. She's a lot of fun to play as and I want to take a moment to praise her voice acting. Holy shit did I feel a range of emotions as Amy traverses this island dying from the cyber corruption that previously plagued Sonic. She's really proven herself in this game, no longer the damsel in distress obsessed with Sonic, but an independent free thinker whose kindness and compassion defines her path. I loved running around Uranus as Amy and I can't wait to see where her future will take her in the next game. Knuckles is next and it's so great to play as my favourite Echidna again. He comes with his glide ability and is able to climb up red walls placed around the island. He has a foray of abilities that really feel true to the character, showcasing his fiery temper and incredible strength. It's up to Knuckles to beat the living shit out of the defense systems hiding the Chaos Emeralds and he does so with a rash arrogance that I love so much. Then there's Tails who is in charge of unlocking the Chaos Emeralds from their vaults. Our favorite fox boy can fly across the map with the determination we'd seen through the game thus far. You can even unlock the tornado to fly across the map at breakneck speeds and heights and I'm in love with the fact that kishimoto Sun included this amazing SA2 callback. Our three heroes are tasked with finding the Chaos Emeralds instead of Sonic this time and that leads me to talk about the incredible, epic new story laid out in the Final Horizon update. Instead of the traditional ending, this time it's up to the team to save the world as opposed to just Sonic. Instead he must face the trials of the masters, ascending four large towers that are monuments to the pilots of the titans. Similar to the ones on Rear Island, these will allow Sage to unlock new abilities for Sonic using the cyberspace corruption that was once killing him. These towers and trials are intense, testing your every ability to achieve victory. After completing the Master King's trial, which is one of the toughest things I've ever faced in a Sonic game, it's time to face Supreme as we did before. 
but once the Titan is defeated, we aren't flying up into space anymore. Instead, the end looms over the horizon and connects to the Titan, replenishing health continuously whilst flinging meteors at you. Upon the realization that you can't deflect these things, it's time for Sonic to unlock a brand new super form that fans are affectionately calling Super Sonic 2. I remember the first time I played it, I was with Jess and she was watching me just with my jaw on the floor and then as soon as it came back up, I was just subsequently screaming the entire way through. I don't think she's ever seen anything like that from me. I'm really sorry. I absolutely fucking love this. There's an arrogance to Sonic now. A almost Vegeta style, you're really trying to fuck with me vibe from Sonic that just has me squealing even as I write this script. Then, after lifting Supreme's cannon in the air, Eggman grabs it and fires Sonic into the end as he unleashes the full power of the cyber corruption in what is the most epic moment in Sonic's history. I can't even do it justice with words, so let's watch it together right now. Sonic, it's now or never! Sorry, Master King! Looks like I'm going all out after all! And then the day is saved, with Sonic crashing to Earth and the story coming to an end. I've already said this in this video, but Kishimoto-san really didn't need to do this. And in doing so, he's gone back, improved on what he wanted to improve, and given us, as the fan base, something incredibly beautiful. A perfect final ending to what was already an incredible game. He listened on Twitter and added whatever he could within reasonable limits. There's even an extended soundtrack of absolute fire with a re-recorded version of I'm Here from Kellen Quinn that still gives me chills every time I listen to it. Which, let's be honest, is every day. All of this changes Sonic Frontiers. It elevates it to levels beyond that which I could have imagined. It takes the epic feel of the game previously and elevates it to an entirely different level that has me so fucking proud to be a Sonic fan. Sonic Frontiers is a completely different game a year later. It's grown and it's evolved and I can't sing its praises enough. The lessons learned here will hopefully shape the future of this franchise and bring even more hype and excitement with future titles. I'm beyond excited for the future. Which is why I'm gonna say this game has elevated from its original 9 out of 10 to a 10 out of 10. That doesn't mean it's perfect, mind you. Nothing is, but perfection doesn't necessarily count for a 10 out of 10 in my eyes. Otherwise, we would never use the metric of a 10 out of 10 because nothing in this world is perfect. So yeah, I'm giving it a 10 for being one of the best Sonic experiences you can ever have alongside things like the adventure series and the movies and things like that. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. And of course, if you got to this point in the video, slap a like on it. Let me know you got to the end. And of course, hit subscribe. We are dangerously close to 2K subs. Dangerously. So just hit the button, man. What are you doing? Why are you, why are you mucking around? You want the best Sonic content on the platform? Here it is, the Kalami Hatchie YouTube channel. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. 
Slap a like, hit subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now. I'm here,